All right, today I'm gonna to be tearing into the front end on Yamaha Timberwolf 250. We've done the back end, we've gone through and uh, inspected that differential. I've showed you how to service this Timberwolf. Also done a brief overview of the entire four-wheeler. Tore down the motor, adjusted valves, uh, cleaned and rebuilt the carburetor. Now we're gonna tear into the front end. We've got our brake components here, we've got our suspension here, tie rods, lower A-arm. I'm gonna show you how to disassemble and reassemble all of this. So the first thing we're gonna do, obviously, is jack the front end up, pull the wheels and tires off. I've already done that. There's 17 millimeter Acorn lug nuts on here. We've got those uh, removed. I reinstalled them just so we don't kick those around and, and lose them at all. Um, so I just threaded those back on a couple of times. You just do that, everything will be kept together. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that subscribe button for us. Make sure that you uh, check out our other channels on the Timberwolf. We've got hundreds of other videos on different makes and models, so make sure you check those out. I appreciate feedback that you guys give us in the comments below. Also, always appreciate you guys subscribing. Next thing we're gonna do here is grab a pair of side dikes or side cutters here. We're gonna grab this keeper. We're gonna straighten out these ends, and then we are going to take and tap this out. A lot of times, uh, if these are rusty, if they're in bad shape, it's a little bit more challenging to do this. You can actually take and break them off if you need to. Uh, as long as you have a new one or a good one to go back in, really doesn't matter how you get these out of here. They just need to come out. If you don't pull these out, you're gonna have a very, very difficult time removing this next nut off of here. So go ahead and grab those. That's why I like the side cutters here, or the side dikes, because you can take and grab and pull and bend. And uh, they just do a really good job of allowing you to get in there and, and mangle this thing up. So um, what you can do too, if you can't get it off, I took like this one here. This one seems to be stuck in there some for some reason. So take the end and then you can just pull one side out at a time if you need to. Or you can take like that one there. Since we cut it, we're able to just take both of those off. Got those off. Now we've got a 22 millimeter socket we're going to put on there. And then I'm gonna use a half inch drive impact to remove this nut here. Go ahead, now grab that half inch impact, put it on and remove that. Typically these aren't very difficult to pull off of there. I'll get you the torque specs on these, but it's actually not very much because you've got that keeper running through here. It's not gonna allow this nut to come off of there. Now, if you uh, do put this on there and forget to put the keeper in there, more than likely this nut's gonna work itself off of there some point your wheel, tire, everything's just gonna come off. You don't want that to happen. So make sure you've got that cotter pin in there so that uh, that nut doesn't pull off of there. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that your brakes are adjusted into the narrowest position as possible. So if you've got tension on this actual brake uh, cable here, or this arm's you know pushed back like that, engaging your brakes, and so you can't turn it there, you're also not gonna be able to pull it off of there. You want those brakes in uh, the most compressed position that you possibly can. And it looks like this is gonna be the spot right here. Sometimes, depending on um, what's been inside of this housing, sometimes it'll take a little persuasion. You can see there that you've got a, a seal here that sometimes can bind in there. If you've got rust or water that's been sitting in there, these can rust on there. The other thing that can happen, there's actually a bearing and a seal right here that can get uh, seized onto the actual axle itself or onto your knuckle there and then it's very, very difficult to pull this off. On the four wheel drive models, I believe I've tore into one of those front ends for you. You can actually take and tap on your axle with a rubber mallet or a plastic mallet and get that axle pushed in there. That kind of breaks things free. Then you're able to take and remove this hub. This is not gonna be the case. You're not gonna be able to tap here. It's not gonna go anywhere because there's no, gonna be no place for that, that pivot point or that knuckle to be pushed back. So you're just gonna have to do your tapping here. A lot of times if you take and just do one side or the other, take and pull that off of there. We've got it removed now at this time. You can see here that we've got our brake shoes that completely fell apart there. These are our brake shoes. So we've got your top and bottom there. Um, and they're, they're both the same, so it doesn't really matter which one's top or which one's bottom. But you do wanna make sure that you've got good brake shoes on there. Make sure that the pads are actually on there and uh, not falling apart like this one. There's that bearing that I was telling you about. To remove that, just take and flip this hub over and take a punch, push that bearing out this way. Um, obviously replacing seals when you're doing all of that. You've got a maximum outer diameter there, so um, you wanna make sure that uh, your brake drum is in spec. Make sure there's no major grooving or major wear. All of this is surface rust to be cleaned up, so we'll clean that up before we go back together. To replace your brake shoes, 
And before I pull them off of there, I wanna show you what I was talking about here. When you engage your brakes, you're, you're pushing this, this pivot arm here back, and that's allowing your brake pads to spread apart, and then that's engaging your actual brake drum. So releasing your brakes, gonna put that back into the horizontal position there. It's gonna compress those brake shoes. You're gonna allow your wheel to spin. If you take and adjust this butterfly nut so that your, your brakes are always engaging or at least they're gonna be tighter, you could potentially adjust these shoes to the position where they're always uh, grinding on your drum. That's gonna wear your brake pads down in a hurry. It's also gonna heat up and cause some other wear on your actual drum, your brake shoes, your brake panel could potentially rust, uh, melt this seal here. So something to consider, make sure you've got your brake arm adjusted in the right place. Uh, you're not gonna be able to see it very well here, but there is a wear arm here, a wear indicator. It's just a little peg and it's got kind of a full and low mark there. I don't remember what they call those. It's not full and low. I don't know what it is, but basically when, you're, when your arm is getting to the point where um, it's touching that indicator mark on this side, which I believe is the, it's gonna be on the top side that's when you know that you need to replace those shoes. So I wouldn't always base off of that. It's easy enough to pull this assembly off of there, inspect your brake shoes, make sure they're in good condition before going out and riding. The other thing you're gonna do, so when it comes time to replace your actual brake shoes, what you can do is actually take top and bottom there, just take and remove them just like that. That's gonna allow you to get your new set on there. So you can actually assemble your new set on the bench and then you can take, put them on just like this. Obviously that's gonna be attached. Put them on just like this and then slide them into place. And there you go. Then you're gonna wanna adjust those after you get your brake drum on there. So these are obviously shot. These are gonna get thrown in the trash. Next what I'm gonna do is pull your panel off of here. This is your brake panel. You might call it a brake caliper. Not technically a brake caliper because brake caliper is typically when you're dealing with hydraulic or at least brake shoes. But a lot. I think Yamaha calls this a brake panel. You've got 12 millimeter bolts here, four of those. We can remove this panel. So to remove those four, just take, I like to use an impact, and you take and loosen these four and remove them. We've got a vent hose here we're gonna remove. We can just take and pry that off with our side dike. Typically, if these are older, which this one obviously is, 97, um, typically that brake hose is gonna be dry rotted. You do wanna make sure when you're pulling it off of there, that if it does break, make sure you've got a good one on there. A lot of times they're long enough to just cut the end off of this and reuse it, but uh, if that hose is dry, rotted, and you don't wanna reuse it, you do wanna make sure you pull the rest of it off of there, whatever broke. So setting that aside, um, what we're gonna do is remove our cable, and I showed you already wing nut and then a small brake drum in here, a, a little uh, pin that runs through this uh, arm here. So we've got that removed. Now what we're gonna do is there's a little, I wish I could turn this to a spot where you guys can see it. Maybe you can see it there, but get that spring out of the way. Then behind your spring, holding your cable on is gonna be a circlip. All right, that little circlip that I was talking about is there. This is obviously gonna be on the left-hand side, but get a screwdriver in there, pry on that little circlip, pull it up there and then you'll be able to just take and pull your cable out and then out that little slat that you're gonna have a hard time seeing. Out that little line right there. So that's gonna be uh, where, how you're gonna pull the cable off of. Both sides, right and left, they're gonna be the same way. So you remove that circlet, grab a small screwdriver, and you've gotta push that spring out of the way. Again, that's gonna be really hard for you to see. Remove that circlet. And then we can actually take then and pull this cable and the spring and everything back. And then there'll be a groove to the, the inside of that panel that you can slide everything out. Now your cable is right here with your spring. We'll set that aside. Now we are actually ready to remove this panel. Okay, grabbing a rubber mallet here because I don't want to damage anything. Tap on it, there you go. You got your panel completely pulled off of there. There is the arm that I kept on talking about. There's your indicator marks there, two raised up bubbles there. There's the little arm. That's where your cable sits. That's your vent line there. This is a removable post, and this is the pivot point here that spreads those shoes apart. So got that set aside here. 
And then we are going to remove our tie rod. Okay, so we're going to remove this nut here. It's a 17 millimeter. Put your impact underneath it. Now sometimes guys will have problems with these actually not coming off of there. Their actual tie rod will be spinning at the same time. If that's happening, what you do is grab a 14 millimeter wrench, shove it underneath between your knuckle and your tie rod there. There's a groove for your uh, wrench to fit on there. Again, a 14 millimeter wrench. And then uh, you can go ahead and put your 17 millimeter socket on the bottom side and turn it. That'll keep the whole thing from turning. One thing to note is if you use an impact, typically um, they'll spin fast enough that you won't have to do that. So keep that in mind. Now to remove the tie rod off the center, same thing. You've got a cotter pin there that you're gonna pull out. Hopefully this one is a little bit easier for you than some of those other ones because this is in a little bit more of a difficult spot. And then, well, mine just broke. So hopefully yours goes better than that. Okay, so I grabbed the screwdriver, pushed it out as far as I could. Then I grabbed it with my side dikes and got that there. Now what you can do is grab your 17 millimeter you can come in either from the bottom or you can come in and turn it as far as you can uh, to it'd be the right and remove it that way. So now it's off. Now we're able to, a couple different ways now of getting this off of there, use a plastic mallet to tap up. If that doesn't work, what you can do is grab a, a pry bar and put it underneath of here and tap on it. All right, what you can do is actually take your pry bar in here. Then a lot of times if you just take and tap on the actual knuckle itself. It'll just pry right up like that. You can do the same thing in the back. The other thing that you can do is just take and tap on here. If you're replacing the ends, the tie rod ends, you actually take and tap right on the tie rod, but you wanna be careful doing that. You don't damage things. Typically, they're not very hard, but sometimes uh, they can be a challenge. We've got a cotter pin up top here on this knuckle, so we'll remove that one. And got a 17 millimeter here to remove. That one is off, and that actually, that ball joint is connected to your lower A-arm. Let's remove this knuckle at this time. So, put pressure underneath of this knuckle, took and tapped on that knuckle there, and it just popped right out of there. So, that is going to be, the knuckle is now uh, not attached anymore. I'm going to leave it there until we pull these bolts off of here. 17 millimeter nut, 17 millimeter bolts. They can run that out. Now we can take and tap these bolts out. If they're not coming super easily, you can just take impact. That broke those free. Obviously a little bit of rust on there. Not a big deal. Now that's able to come off of there. Now for our top. So let's see, you can see there our knuckle is gonna come off just to kind of balance things out and I'll leave that knuckle attached. I'm gonna put you up top here so you can see what's going on on the top of our shock. A lot of people struggle with the bolt up top here. We have got the camera up here on the top. We're gonna to go ahead and remove this shock. I've got snap ring pliers. What you're gonna do is grab those snap ring pliers. There's a little snap ring on the top there. Take and remove that. Make sure you're wearing eye protection so that, that snap ring doesn't go zinging off and get you in the eyeball. So that's the snap ring there. Set that aside. Now for our next nut there, I'm gonna tell you what size it is in the comments below or maybe I'll post a quick picture of the size of socket that you need for this. My largest socket that I have in the shop right now is an inch and a half, not big enough. So what I did was actually grab a, uh, the universal wrench here, and a lot of guys will know what I'm talking about there. Take and set that on there now. This one actually, this is all the pressure that I had to put on there. Not very much, it was very, very loose. So that tells me that probably it doesn't need to be that tight. More than likely you guys will be able to pull your nut off of there as quick and easy as I did. But if you don't, I'll have that socket listed below. Take, spin that off then, and there is your shock completely mm -hmm. off of there. We've already removed the bottom, kind of went over that, and this entire frame is gonna flip over if I take my hand off of this. So I'll just leave it here for the remainder of the video. Go ahead, pull this knuckle off, pull the A-arm. You've got, if you can see, all right, from this camera angle, you've got a 14 millimeter bolt here, a 17 millimeter nut. This bolt comes in from the front, so it's gonna to shoot to the back. This one comes in from the back, so it's gonna to shoot to the front. Go ahead and remove those two bolts of there. That's gonna allow you to slide your A-arm off of there. We've just pulled the knuckle off of there, and that is the entire front end on the Yamaha Timberwolf 250. This is a 1997 model, but I've done a handful of other Timberwolves. Identical process. They do make a four-wheel drive one, so that's gonna be slightly different, and I can shoot a separate video on that if I have not already. 
You guys go ahead and post below in the comments. Uh, if you found this video helpful, make sure you maybe leave a comment of what you guys would like to see next. I want to get you information that you guys find is helpful. So I appreciate any feedback I can get from you guys. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing to our channel and giving us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.